Afternoon, everyone. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, improving school attendance, you know, particularly during COVID, but we'll also talk about the history of, of our relationship with Parkland and, and really Lehigh County and um, Michelle's program with, with KS Consultants. Uh, it's been extremely successful. Uh, uh, this year was, was obviously a challenge, and I'm sure everybody that's on this want, wanting to hear this, uh, you know, realizes that this is a different year. Um, and, you know, I think all of Lehigh County got out to a bit of a slow start, probably like everyone else, uh, until we managed to get students to realize that, you know, some of the requirements changed this year for attendance. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but we're, we're, we're happy to answer any of your questions as this goes on. Um, you know, our, our contact information is made available to you. Feel free that if you don't want to contact us here, you can certainly contact us via email or phone or whatever is easiest for you. We're, we're uh, you know, we're, we have, a, a, I think, a, a very good relationship, a very good program um, and, it, and the help of children and youth. So this is a really a team effort. It's not just a Parkland effort. It's not just a KS effort. It's a children and youth effort. It's uh, something that if you could slide to the next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, it's really part of the of the Children's Roundtable of Lehigh County. Um, you know, I, I took over a subcommittee of the Lehigh County Children's Roundtable in around 2013, and uh, you know, at that time, you know, there was representatives from from uh, some of the school districts, not all of them, in Lehigh County. You know, Lehigh County has nine school districts, uh, a number of charter schools, um, but the major uh, public schools were, you know, nine major public schools. Uh, always represented with someone from children and youth, juvenile probation. You know, we had uh, um, many of our resource officers would be able to come when they had, had the ability to uh, with Lehigh County Mental Health, um, you know, and it was led by one of our really one of our judges who was assigned by the president judge. And then for quite some time, it was Judge Brian Johnson. Um, and, you know, we subsequently has had a, a, a change recently. Um, but, but the reality is this, this was set up to be a, a way in which we could talk about truancy. We had uh, really high numbers of, of truancy cases being sent on a regular basis to the district magistrate, um, you know, mainly because in the suburban areas, there wasn't any other really mechanism, um, you, know, to, you know, to divert students from being truant. Uh, and, and really, as a result of the fact that that Parkland was, you know, I, I had kind of a, you know, being a chair, uh, the opportunity to get the ear of a lot of the people downtown in, in Center City, Allentown is there's a lot of services that I don't think many school people really, really realized were out there to help us. You know, it, it became a, a conduit for for teaching about what was all to have what, what all was available and offered you know, from the county level that really we just never took advantage of or really didn't know. But one thing we learned is that, you know, the Allentown, the Center City Allentown had a, a truancy program, a successful truancy program. And, uh, you know, it was sponsored and, and partially paid through children and youth. And my question kept being, but what about the suburban schools? Um, you know, and it's like, uh, well, you, you know, you have, you, you, you can get your own program, you can pay for your own program. Well, if you recall that 2012, 13, 14 time period, schools didn't have anything. Schools were cutting back on everything. Um, and there was very little, uh, obviously not any kind of money to be hiring anything that would be, um, you know, a, a truancy only program. Uh, so in, in discussing things with children and youth and saying, you know, well, we need help too. Um, and they had some researchers go out and look and, and they met Michelle. Uh, and, and KS's program, and, and they brought them on. And this is, a, this is why I say this isn't just Parkland, it's not Michelle, it's children and youth. Children and youth saw a need um, and, and put some dollars into it, quite frankly, put quite you know, a, a substantial amount of investment into this to see if this would work. Um, and, and, and I, can't, I couldn't say enough about Michelle and her team. And, and really what the round table did is we went from one or two schools to now usually having eight or nine and then another three or four or five charter schools now that are involved in our monthly meetings. And we talk about nothing but truancy and nothing about but attendance and nothing. How can we make things better 
for our kids that, and what are the barriers that we have that we can all work on together? So it's really become an entire county F, countywide effort in schools. Um, you know, but much of the challenges that happened in Allentown, Center City, was happening in Parkland. It was happening in East Penn. It was happening in Salisbury. It, there, there wasn't much difference except, you know, when you put that that backbone or that hammer of children and youth, that children and youth is going to be supportive of what we're doing to get your children to school. It really, really wakes parents up, um, you know, and, and, and again, just, uh, I, I know in the first two years, this is the third year of the program, and the first two years, our truancy um, citations across the county dropped 75%. Uh, um, they almost dropped off the face. Our, our, I know the magistrate that we deal with was shocked. He said, I have free time in my calendar that I'm not doing constant truancy meetings and truancy hearings. Um, you know, we've changed, it, it, it's gotten a little worse this year. I think mainly because of how we get out of the box. Um, and, and now as you're working towards the end of school, you know, you have those students that are, are, are getting up in that area of 10 and 12, uh, you know, unexcused illegal absences that are, are, are requiring, you know, Michelle can't get at them or can't get to them or they don't work with Michelle's group. You know, that's our next step is to, you know, is to work towards taking them to the magistrate. Um, but we, we did learn some things this year. Michelle, maybe you want to talk a little bit about what you found out as you were assigned some of the students, particularly from the, the, the schools that you work directly with. Yeah, so, um, you know, the same issues as many other years. And I know um, last year we weren't able to present here and we were going to actually share a letter because in other years we had found that there were a lot of doctor appointments and things like that that were occurring during school hours. Um, and so we had come up with, and, and maybe I can share that at the end if I can pull it up. We had come up with a countywide letter that every single district had its logo on to talk about the importance of um, trying to schedule these doctor appointments and such um, after school. It, we were sending that out to pediatricians and to um, dentists and, uh, you know, for braces, what's orthodontics orthodontist yes and <laughs> orthodontist so we kind of worked together and came up with that great letter i know that was a big thing that we were going to share last year but of course we weren't able to present because everything was um, postponed but um this year obviously we are still seeing those same issues uh, but this year we're seeing very different things too so last year i know everyone was kind of thrown into this oh my gosh we're in a pandemic what do we do we're scrambling you know, some people didn't have the technology to go online, um, you know, we, and, and a lot of schools scrambled. And so I, I don't think that truancy was number one on everyone's mind. I mean, obviously you're trying to get the kids in, in um, doing their schoolwork and stuff, but it was just very difficult. So then, you know, I was really, it was really great to see that when kids went back in the fall, um, that all the schools here really were doing a pretty great job. Uh, so part of what we saw when we were getting out there and going into homes is that um, parents believe that their children were logging on, uh, or at least that's what they were presenting to us when we would get out there. So we would get a truancy referral and I'd go out to the home and we'd do the intake and they're like, well, they're logging on, they're doing it. And I said, okay, well, can you show me their, their progress or how, how many hours or what they've done? They would log in in the morning, show the parents that they logged on mom's online doing her work because she's working, dad is out. Um, and here the student logs on for the morning and then is playing video games or on FaceTime or Instagram for the rest of the day and, uh, and really not participating as they should. So we're finding that even though parents are seeing their student in front of the laptop and they keep a hundred pages open. So they're clicking from one thing to the next. Um, when the parent walks by to check on them, they're quick bringing up their schoolwork, but in reality, they're doing something else instead for most of the day. Um, we we had a lot of technology issues where, um, you know, parents were saying that they, so the schools were providing them technology. You know, they had the Chromebooks, uh, but they did not have good Wi-Fi or some of our areas are, um, you know, they don't really have high-speed internet. So that has become an issue for some of our families. Um, a lot of schools are providing hotspots and things like that to help students with this. Um, other things are they're just not home. Parents aren't home. They're, they're off at work and the students are there um, during the day. And this is 
this is especially for the for the students who are fully virtual um, and on the hybrid days. So when they're at home, they're they're just not getting things done. Um, and then also for the for the families who had been chronically truant in the past. Um, so the, the families who have a history of kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, making excuses for why they're not there. We saw a lot of, oh, I was exposed to COVID. I can't, I can't come into the school or you can't come in to help us because we were exposed to COVID. So then you have a family who's not logging on to do the schoolwork and then we're supposed to provide a service um, virtually. It just, it, those, are, those have been some of our major issues this year during the, the pandemic. But we are seeing um, an increase in, it, in attendance and um, students doing their, their virtual work as well now that the schools have been um, allowing more in-person instruction. So that, that has been positive. Um, but those have been probably, Rod, tell me if I missed anything, but those have been probably our biggest issues this year um, regarding attendance. Yeah, yes, no, no, no doubt about it. Um, <clears throat> again, like get, getting started out of the box, you try to communicate to parents and, and let them know that attendance is more than just turning on your laptop, as Michelle said, and then going in, and going into all other things, you know, you needed to, to be engaged, you need somehow to show your engagement, whether it be, you know, working on the assignment that was assigned during class or an exit ticket or something that showed that, hey, I was here from the beginning, and I could answer the question at the end, I wasn't you know, sitting and doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Um, parents couldn't couldn't understand that, that if they didn't put those two things together, a student wasn't attending, um, you know, that you needed both of those pieces that we followed the PD guidance and, uh, and, and they, they said, well, you know, but he's on, he's on, as Michelle said. And that was what we heard through really the first uh, month or so, month and a half maybe of, well, but he is on, but he did log on. I saw him get on, I saw him and, and they did. They did. The, the problem was the child didn't do anything. He turned it on. He went on to whatever he wanted to do. Mom thought he was on because she saw him on. And, and that's where it was at. You know, we're at a time period where we have very, very savvy children are probably much more savvy than with computer technology than I am. And, uh, you know, and their parents much more savvy than their parents are. And, and you know, so that was that was really why we kind of got out of the box, I think, uh, of the school year really slow. Um, you know, it, it became, you know, some of the problems that we had with getting kids to do their work is they felt like, well, you know, I'm not getting credit for attendance anyway. I'm in trouble with attendance. And they do their work on a Saturday night all night or a Friday night all night and hand everything in. And, you know, teachers were accepting it, but yet how, you couldn't account that as attendance, uh, as doing it all at one time because you needed to be in class. And that was that that trying to get engagement of students to be engaged in their lessons. And, and I think we got over that hump, probably, I would say, uh, maybe mid October, we, we finally got people to realize it's all, you know, we're not asking you to, to do a whole lot here, just when you're assigned to be in a zoom lesson or, or, or whatever that may be that you are there, and you are engaged, there's times when you're going to have asynchronous work to do. And, you know, there, there isn't going to be a classroom time period slot for you. Uh, third period, and you know, but if you wanted to talk to your teacher, there was office hours for the teachers to, to deal with that stuff. Um, so I, I think it was just more of a procedural process that really was a struggle at the beginning. And, you know, certainly we could have done a better job of explaining it to our parents and not blaming anybody. I, hey, I don't think any of us are masters of this, and I certainly don't want to be. Um, but, you know, as we got better, now it seems that we're not having those questions anymore about attendance. Um, those that were not attending all year are still struggling to get attendance. And, you know, yes, our, our numbers have, have gone up, um, you know, not, not tremendously, but they've gone up much higher in terms of our, our, our magistri magisterial uh, hearings that, that we had to take students to. Uh, and, and even when we go to the magistrate, our goal is never to take anyone's money. It's not about fining parents or anything. It's about getting kids in school. So, you know, some of the things that we talk about for, for kids, uh, you know, is, you know, some of it's a parenting thing. Some of it's really parents just don't know how to deal with, you know, their, their, you know, fifth or sixth grader who doesn't want to go to school, just doesn't go to school. And, you know, so we'll offer to the, Michelle's group organization has some parenting programs. Uh, you know, um, the Center for Humanistic Change in our area also has parenting programs to get them to understand the importance of, 
of a routine in the morning. And Michelle can talk a little bit about what, what, what her program does, but really to get kids ready to come to school. Some of it's really just, just there's no preparation in the morning. There's no routine. Um, you know, we as a school, we, we, I can't fix that, but Michelle can. And Michelle's group does, and they do a wonderful job of it. Um, you know, knowing that, that they're there to go out and do the legwork of, you know, our homeschool visitors will stop in, but, you know, they'll see what's going on. But again, it, it's not something that the school can fix, um, you know, and, and Michelle's program is integral in that. And maybe you want to speak a little bit more about that, Michelle. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll just go through. So, I mean, I think probably most of the people here understand the responsibility, um, you know, as a school for truant children. Um, so I'll just move on to the chaos consultant stuff and what we, how we partner with the schools in the county. Um, so we actually started this. I mean, not that truancy hasn't always been an issue, but I've, be I've begun to hear more truancy. Um, I would say in the last five years, but we've been doing this since 2008. Um, so what happens is. Um, like the process of this. And I, I see some familiar names that are in attendance here. So um, basically the school will identify a student who's, who's truant and, and some schools act on this at, at different time periods. But where we see uh, that a really great time for the referral is um, before that 10 day mark, uh, that's the ideal time for us to receive the referral. So basically then the school must complete the SAPE uh, and, and they have to give that a bit of time to work. The, the, the county just needs it to be completed in order to be able to fund it. And the county funds it with diversionary dollars. So basically what's happening is children and youth is not opening the case. They are, we get the referral. So KS gets the referral and um, we send it to, to children and youth. And they basically say, okay, there's no other evident um, child welfare issues at this time it's it's truancy and so they put us in and they pay for our services so the process then is that myself or like three other people who are employees here in lehigh or, uh, lehigh county we would go out do an intake we gather all the background information on the student and the family as well um, sometimes we find being probably the first people who have ever been to that home as a provider we find that sometimes there's other really major issues going on. And then we end up having to refer to a more intensive service or program um, or children and youth then does become involved. But let's say that they don't and it is appropriate and it's you know mostly a truancy issue. Um, we've come to understand that truancy is more a symptom of, of other issues. Um, it, it's usually, I remember when we first got started, I felt like it was gonna be kids playing hooky it, it's not just that. There's there's a lot of mental health involved. Um, there's you know there's housing issues. There's drug and alcohol. Um, there's a lot of things going on with these kids and their families as to why they're not um, attending school regularly. And that's with the pandemic or without the pandemic. Um, so you know we get involved and we figure out kind of what's going on. We come up with a treatment plan, and then we come up with our treatment team. Um, so we, we don't just get releases signed for the school. Uh, we get releases signed for any other therapist that the child might be working with. We get um, releases signed for if the parent's working with mental health or drug and alcohol, we get releases for them as well. And um, we also would get any releases for um, like if they're, if they're involved, it, like any other adults who might be involved in that child's life. Um, and then so basically we start there. We have what's called the family service coordinator, which is essentially a family therapist. Um, and that person goes out to the home um, roughly one to two times per week. And they'll work on figuring out what's going on. As Rod mentioned, sometimes it's the AM PM routine. Sometimes there's no um, structure in the home. Sometimes we're going in there and helping these parents to come up with just general rules and and rewards consequences for kids um you know sometimes it's really basic things like you know where we find that the am pm routine is is really the biggest deal and we get there and mom thinks that the kid's going to bed at 10 when she puts them to bed but really he's got a tv in his room and he's playing video games all night long and that's why he doesn't want to wake up in the morning so it's not it's not a cookie cutter program and i i say this to every family probably when i go out to do the intake i can't just give you 
a sheet and say, this is A to Z exactly what we're going to do because every family is so different and all of their, their issues um, vary significantly. So we really come in there and we, we really try to understand what's going on with each family individually. And then we develop that treatment plan around that family. Um, so the goal obviously is to get that student attending regularly and increase their, not only attendance, but their academic achievement as well. Um, so I kind of say to families, we come in and we kind of take over in the beginning. Uh, we do a lot of it and then we're modeling for the parents as well. And then um, as, as the program, you know, as we move further on in the program, we tend to back off a little bit and allow the family to do more while we observe. And, um, and then as we're kind of in sustainability, we don't just say, oh, great, Johnny made it to school for seven days straight, we're done, we're closed. We, this is our, our period of time that we call sustainability period where we're going to stay around and just understand that Johnny may have two steps forward and then one or two back. So we, we stick around for a while longer just to make sure that it's sustained improvement. Not that as soon as KS closes out that, okay, then it's gonna go back to where we were square one. Um, so we might stay involved for another month at a lower level, um, more on that sustainability like observation period. Um, and then just to ensure that it's gonna be long-term success. I think I probably chatted too long and. So yeah, so this is, this is some of the things that we provide. Um, we address the mental health needs. We attend any school meetings uh, that might occur um, in IEP, any, anything that's going on. We try to, and, and if there's a, a problem, a lot of times there's a poor relationship between uh, the school and the family, especially if it's a, if it's a chronic family where you know they, there's maybe several children who have always had um, issues with truancy. And uh, so we kind of try to bridge that gap between the school and the, and the family. Um, the individual advocate would be the person who goes out multiple times a week. They meet individually with the child. They also meet with the family. They would provide, um, like they do fun things with them. So they'll connect them to community resources. They, they drive them to school if necessary. They're the one who's making sure that the child is logged on. They're the one who's understanding. I, my advocates are amazing. They know pretty much every charter school, every private school that we work with, every public school, they learn their system. So, and everybody's different. So they'll learn Parklands and, you know, Roberto Clemente, who's on here, I see. And, you know, the private schools, they learn all of their, their online programs so that when they go to the family's home, they can teach the parent how to how to learn the program so that they understand how to log on too. So we have we learn each of those programs so that we can assist the students. Um, and then, like I said, we'll sometimes we're doing things with students like getting them involved with um, community activities. So if we've got sometimes kids are you know they haven't been out of their house for so long, they haven't been doing much, but they're really like athletic students. They like to be out. We've connected kids with boxing, soccer, football. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff out there, dancing lessons, karate, um, you know, just getting them involved in the community. And, um, you know, even sometimes families ask uh, food banks, um, you name it, we're just getting them involved with other, other community um, providers and resources. Um, and then, of course, if it's needed, we, we would refer, like I said, to higher level of care, if that's something that the family is in need of. Um, and and uh, it, we do find that, like I said early on in the presentation, we're often the first people who have ever been in that home. And um, sometimes we walk in and we're like, oh my gosh, this is this is just way more. They need children and youth involved um, and they, they need more services. And sometimes we're able to stay involved with them at that point, but, um, but also then get them some additional help as well. And even though this program is a voluntary program for families. Um, I feel like they're usually very agreeable to meet with us because the alternative is fines or um, involvement with children and youth. So we present it as, hey, you've got options. You can work with this program, but likely, you know, if you choose not to, you're going to end up with either children and youth or you'll end up at the magistrate with fines or just another provider. Um, and a lot of times the families are 
you know, sometimes they're really wanting the help and excited for the help. And then other times they're like, you know, it's kind of forced upon them. But even those families who they feel like it's being forced upon them, I have to say, generally in the beginning, they're like, we don't, we don't really need the service. We don't want the service. And then by the end of the three to, you know, I, I put five there, but three to six months, they're usually like, hey, can you guys stay? Can you guys stay on a little bit longer? <laughs> um, because it's not punitive. We're not there to punish them. We're there to help them. And I think um, they, they tend to realize that soon after we begin working with them. Um, and then, oh yeah. So Rod, sorry if I missed anything, if you wanna go ahead and-, and uh... No, just, just a couple of things that I, I, I think is important to, to understand as well as, you know, when all of that's going on with Michelle, sh she's communicating that back to usually our guidance counselors or, or you know, whomever, uh, you know, is gonna be doing the referral or assistant principals. And it, it means a lot because, you know, we were, many of us are in schools and probably the vast majority on here are in schools. And you know what you think, well, the kid just doesn't wanna to come to school. He doesn't come to school. So, you know, inevitably you get tired of it. You get tired of dealing with it. You get a bad taste in your mouth. You have no idea what's going on in that house, nor would you ever have an understanding of what is going on in that house. With Michelle and the program, we get a, a, a really in-depth look at what's going on in this child's life that it gives you the, wow, this, there's a little bit more here than, than we even ever had a clue about. Um, and, you know, and it changes the demeanor. You talk about trauma, you know, we, we learn about trauma from, you know, Michelle's program, from, from the caseworkers. They're, they're telling us about what's going on in that house. They're telling us about the drug abuse. They're telling us about, uh, you know, uh, just, just people who don't know how to, who struggle with maintaining their house. And, you know, I mean, one, we had a student who would never come to school because, you know, she smelled. And it was because the house was filthy in cat urine. And, and every, we had no idea the kid had ever come to school and, you know, getting into the 20 and 30 days. And finally, by getting them in the door, that student hasn't missed a whole lot of school in the last three years. So, it, it you know, there, there's some real important other things that come out of it besides the kid coming to school is that, that the help that they're needed. You know, the parents sometimes need help, um, you know, getting that part of the life of a child somewhat organized or somewhat uh, regular is such a help for kids. Uh, remember, they learn from their family. And if their parents, you know, time management skills are terrible, what are you expecting from a third grader? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's probably one of the reasons we really spend a lot of time with, with Michelle and her group working on kids that are, you know, younger families, you know, families with kids that are in kindergarten, first, second, third. You know, because I think we realize if we don't get to them and get them to understand how important school is and get them into that routine so they can get to school on time, it's just going to get worse in the following years. You know, as, as school gets more difficult and more challenging, it's easy to say, hey, I stayed home before. I might as well stay home now. Um, you know, we're trying to break that. And when, when, once we started this three years ago, you know, the, the, the roundtable committee agreed that let's, let's really concentrate on that K to three, K to four age and you know and and look at look at the family as a as an entire unit did they have brothers and sisters that are now in seventh and eighth grade that have that have truancy problems well you know you're going to have a tough time with that child or is this a new family this is a, this is just a family with first child coming through and you know that they have two or three others that are you know in the wings um, you know you want to fix that problem wherever that is as soon as you can if not it's not a problem for that child. It's gonna be a problem for that child, his brother, his sister, and it's gonna be a, probably a problem for the next 10 or 12 years. Um, so this program has been, been wonderful in helping us understand those things, um, you know, and, and we can work as a team as well. You know, you know, you know that they're not gonna have great days all the time. So you know they're not gonna make it every day. And it's okay because now we understand why they're not making it every day. You know, you start to be happy when they're showing up twice a week. And it sounds like, well, you know, we should take them to the magistrate. Well, what more can we do than let, let them get the assistance that they need, you know, to get their life back in order, to get their, you know, their child's health, mental health back in order. It, it, school just doesn't become all that important all the time. And, you know, and truancy doesn't become all that important all the time uh, when you know the facts behind it, uh, when you know the details behind it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, this is, I've been doing this for 34 years and I've never run into a program where, 
we all work together um, as a county, you know, as a, as a, you know, the county organizations all, all want to do what's right. And I think that's always been that way, but it was so segmented, you know, mental health did their thing, you know, in an, on their own islands. And if you didn't perchance run into some agency through children and youth getting assigned to that, you had no idea what they could offer you. Um, drug, Lehigh County drug and alcohol. Uh, you know, I mean, just one after another, after another, after another thing. So we have a lot of, just to talk about the round table meetings, many times we'll have, somebody will say, hey, things have changed here. We wanna do a report so the schools know what's going on. It's important. You take that back to your schools. You take it back to the people who need to know this stuff. You know, it, you, just keep, you just keep adding tools to the toolbox to help families um, you know, because again, sometimes truancy is important, but it, it's most of the time not the underlying issue that's going on. I mean, we're learning so much more each day in each case that we have coming through. Um, and we've been, you know, as, as a group and as an organization, very, very successful. I always try to say to the, to the roundtable committee, we want to all be in Lehigh County. We want to row the boat in the same direction. We don't want to make it difficult because you're doing it one way and they do it another way. If we row the boat in the same direction, you're going to get the same kind of services from the consultants. And we have other consultants in the Valley. You know, we, we work with Valley Youth House and, and Pinebrook Family Answers. They all do it pretty similar. And, and, and we're all trying to do everything the exact same way. So the SAPE's important. Giving that a chance, as Michelle said, all of those things are being done in Lehigh County. Um, and I think it's a big reason why, you know, Again, prior to this year, we, we had just two years of unbelievable success. Uh, you know, it was it was amazing. And, um, you know, I wish we could have been here last year. Probably I would have brought them. I didn't even give it any thought that we missed last year. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been tremendously successful. Uh, I highly recommend, you know, working with with someone who uh, who can. And, and if not, go to your children and youth provider and tell them, you know, we need help. You know, we're, we're not you know, we're not made of gold and we're not open. We don't have an open checkbook for all of this, but inevitably the way the laws are written now, if the kids aren't coming to school, they're going to end up in children and youth. So it behooves them to have a skin in the game before it gets to them. Um, and, and ours, and I, I couldn't say enough about children and youth, uh, you know, our judges then who are dealing with the, the, the cases that aren't as successful as we'd like them to be, how supportive they are of, oh, it's not, let's find something that's going to work here. You know, and, and it's very, very few anymore that where you hear that, yeah, they find somebody pretty good. And if they did, it's because you just have, I'm not doing it attitudes. And, and, and they're, they've been doing this for a long time. Our, our magistrates have been doing it a long time. They know who they can get to and they know who they can't. And it's very rarely that I think they run into the they can't. And it's just been a big help. So, uh, you know, Michelle, if you have anything else, if not, we can, we'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you may have for us. Um, we appreciate you staying on. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I don't, I don't think I have anything else um, other than if you don't have a children's roundtable in your county, which I, be, I believe most, most everyone that uh, the counties that I work with do. But if you don't, I highly recommend that you work on getting that together um, because it is just an amazing way to share resources. And um, you know, as Rod said, it's it's not just the KS and Parkland show. We work with every single district in Lehigh County um, and all of the providers and the judges. And, um, you know, so it's just a, a really great way to share information. And I think that's what's really made it so successful because we know what, what our county needs and what our schools need. So we're able to work together to provide that. So um, here's our information.